morning. It's very exciting to be here. Uh, what a great crowd. So um, AI has become a global phenomenon, as we all know and believe here. It's a discussion of um, intense discussion in every classroom, every uh, boardroom, every meeting and government um, gatherings. So I'm here today to share with you where I think AI has come from and where it should be going. I was a graduate student uh, entering the field of AI about 15, 17 years ago. And uh, the field was drastically different at that time. Uh, AI researchers, for example, in the field of computer vision and machine learning that I was very familiar with, was still struggling with basic things like teaching computers to see very basic visual, uh, visual tasks like identifying a face in a picture or finding a car or a cat. But um, it was fortunate for those of us that we entered AI in a very special time in history. And that was when internet was growing and exploding. And because of that, we got a new way of thinking about the problem of AI in the age of big data. So we made the observation that instead of just focusing on algorithms and hand designing um, each parameters and all this, there is a role to play um, by big data just as what humans experience in their early days of development. So with that, it le led my students and myself to create ImageNet, which is a large data set organized, uh, by, uh, a large data set of 15 million images uh, organized in 22,000 categories of everyday English vocabulary. It was the largest AI data set available publicly to train huge algorithms in machine learning. And uh, because of that, um, image that um, started to nourish a big um, family of AI machine learning algorithms, and that is the, what we know as convolutional neural network. This is actually a, a family of algorithms developed in the 70s and 80s, but with the, with the significant increase of the availability of data, like ImageNet, it was making incredible uh, progress. On the uh, annual international competition we, uh, we hosted through the ImageNet data set, the, uh, the family of convolutional neural network algorithm was making progress um, in, in significant ways that we have never dreamed of before. So coupled with the amount of big data that's available and Moore's law that carried us into the age of powerful computing hardware, GPUs and so on. We now today take it for granted that um, convolutional neural network and the family of deep learning algorithms are quickly becoming critical tools in many applications beyond uh, vision. So in a way that we now know we have entered the era of deep learning. The progress has been so fast that by 2015, I was invited to the main stage TED conference to share the first machine generated image captioning system, which is a computer algorithm that can describe in details what's in a photo in written English language. And that was something that was unthinkable for me when I was a uh, graduate student 15 years ago. Within another year, I joined Google Cloud as chief scientist of AI with the goal of helping business of all sizes and in all industry to put the power of this technology to work, solving real problems. In less than a decade and a half, AI, at least from my perspective, went from an academic niche to the leading differentiator in businesses, from manufacturing to healthcare to retail. AI is already beginning to change life, work, 
but I think greater changes are, to, to, uh, are lying ahead of us. It's on track to eventually transform every element of our society. In fact, it is often said that we're entering the age of the fourth industrial revolution, and AI is undoubtedly among its chief drivers. So, I often tell my students not to be misled by the name artificial intelligence. There's nothing artificial about it. After all, AI is made by humans, intended to behave like humans, and ultimately to impact human lives and human society. Unfortunately, I think we're not talking enough of that. So for me, what I want to talk about is, in order to advance AI technology to the next generation, and for this technology to play a positive role in tomorrow's world, we must put humani humanity back at its center. This is the approach I call human-centered AI. And it is consisted of three fundamental ideas. The first one is that we need to recognize that the human cognition has a degree of complex, a complexity and nuances that we have not even fathomed or, or, or achieved at all. Beyond our computational skills as intelligent animals, we're driven by emotion, intuition, intention, and empathy. Our perception is incredibly rich, making deep use of our environment, the situation and context. Machine perception today, as incredible as it is, remains very narrow by comparison. Um, a, a researcher in 1970s called Anatole Holt summed it up this way, and it still rings so true today. He says, the definition of today's AI is a computer that can make a perfect chess move while the room is on fire. So, <laughs> for example, the best computer vision algorithm today can describe this photo in the background of this slide as the following words, a field of, of buildings or a green field of buildings. But you and I get to experience something much richer, the beauty of the morning sun, the, 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 the tranquility of the village, and the, uh, the, the, the rich color, and so on. So, so AI is far from achieving that. These may seem like subjective or even inconsequential things if I just use a photo to describe, but they underlie so much of uh, our behavior as humans, without understanding them, how can we expect machines to help us and anticipate our needs or contribute to our well-being? The benefits of machines built on such in intelligence will immediately, uh, be immediately failed. Namely, they will communicate and ca uh, collaborate with us in far more human ways. This brings me to the second element of human-centered AI, is that AI must strive to enhance humans, not to replace them. Today, when we talk about AI, the first word that comes to our mind is job replacement. And this is actually a serious issue. But it's important to recognize that a huge opportunity is waiting for us that is to use AI technology to communicate better, to collaborate better, and to interact better with humans. And through that, we can augment human capability. We can enhance human capability. So while the landscape of jobs is changing, and we shouldn't have any illusion of that, it is far more exciting and important for us to recognize we can also create jobs, create new jobs that would help humans 
take them out of repetitive work, take them out of dangerous situations, avoid human errors that might be fatal for other humans. And that is the opportunity of human-centered AI technology that we need to pay more attention to. But not only we should look at our technology, as I was describing, in the light of human-centeredness with the human dimension, but we should also consider, of course, the impact of AI as much as the development of the technology itself. For all its potential, AI does bring numerous challenges. The labor and automation debate will be with us for years to come. More and more commentators are turning their focus to the issue of bias in machine learning. Beyond that, the vital role of data in AI is raising privacy, security, and ownership concerns. And there are even geopolitical implications of international AI competition. So it is important to recognize all this throughout history. We know, however, critical technologies have been accompanied by sophisticated academic study and guidance. Entire fields have emerged around safety protocols for nuclear technology, for instance. And our energy infrastructure relies on heavy influence from environmental sciences. It's time we do the same for AI. It'll be a complex, multidisciplinary journey. AI will require input from a diverse array of fields, economics, sociology, ethics, philosophy, political science, laws, and more. In fact, I think it's a growing crisis that we're not cross-pollinating enough AI technologists with social scientists, humanists, policymakers, and more. So I often, so what should be done at this point? Um, let me try to get the notes back to, uh, back to uh, normal. Okay, so um, I think there are three things I would like to call for. First, I think there is a huge role academia should play in a new way of thinking about AI, thinking about human-centered AI. AI has outgrown its origin in computer science. It's ready to cross-pollinate way deeper and further with humanities, social sciences, cognitive sciences, brain sciences, and more. Universities have a major role to play here. Not only can they facilitate these multidisciplinary conversation and research, they're also uniquely positioned with the kind of multidimensional talents and students on campus to study these topics and to make improvement of AI technology in the, in the next, uh, for the next generation, as well as to study the far-reaching implication of AI. There's also a role for the government to play. Every government across the world owe it to their citizens to get involved and make positive con contributions to the pursuit. We need to start thinking about policies that support more basic science research in AI, support basic research that, um, that would give us a future of human enhancing technology using AI, support studies and efforts to measure the impacts of AI and support positive policy making uh, measures of AI. It is also important for international governments to collaborate and partner together. The impact of AI will be felt throughout humanity. And as a scientist, I really believe there is no borders for science, nor do the uh, benefits of AI. And last but not the least, there is a lot that the tech world should do as well. AI is not just 
for the elites of Silicon Valley. Small businesses, startups, researchers, educators, students should all have access uh, of this important technology. So it's vital that we enable widespread access. And uh, it's, it's uh, without a platform to share to this world, AI will never reach its full potential. This is why I personally am so excited by the work at Google Cloud. And uh, uh, we are trying to democratize AI and make it as widely available as, uh, as possible. So the tech industry needs to realize the evolution of AI is, is not going to stop. And human-centered AI will soon be the only way to keep up with this challenge and to deliver the tools that will empower customers and enrich their lives. So this is worth their in, uh, investment. Finally, no technology is more reflective of its creators than AI. In fact, I believe there are no independent machine values. Machine values are human values. No matter how autonomous machines become, whether or not they make, they make the world a better place will always be our responsibility. And it's now time to think about AI with humanity in the center of it. Thank you.